Now we're going to move into talking about vaporization and vapor pressure. So uh, just some quick vocabulary uh, before we move on. Um, if you like math, we're going to be getting to the math. So make sure you have your calculators ready shortly. So what is vaporization? Vaporization is defined as the transition from liquid to gas. And so remember that gas molecules have freedom of movement, liquids do not, they have less. So in order for um, a substance to go from a liquid to a gas, the intermolecular forces or the attractions between the molecules, we have to break them. So they must be broken. So the amount of vaporization is increased as the temperature increases. That's what we're used to, heated up. So think kind of boiling of water. Um, you can also increase the vaporization by increasing the surface area. So think about it this way. Um, if you have like a cup of water sitting on the table and then you take another cup of water that's the same amount of it and you spill it, which one's going to dry faster? You should say, well, the water that's spilled on the table because it's spread out. There's more surface area there than there is of the water that's confined in the cup. And then um, you're going to get a lot more vaporization when you have um, a decreased intermolecular force. So um, substances that have weak intermolecular forces, generally your nonpolar molecules, they're probably going to vaporize uh, more quickly. Um, than uh, a more polar molecule because they're going to stick together a little bit better. Now, non-volatile compounds do not vaporize, but volatile compounds do. So we're going to have to talk about the difference between a volatile and a non-volatile. That's going to be um, important when we get into doing some calculations but um, we're going to be talking about how to make something go from a liquid to a gas. Just because something is non-volatile doesn't mean it never goes to a gas. It just is a little bit harder uh, to, to get done. 